We'll look at, we've got some great stuff at Nav and it really is a good card there. But first of all, we'll look at Sandown and a real treat for us. Uh, don't normally get horses of this quality running on a Sunday, but it's the, two, uh, it's the 220, it's the 188 bet, Future Stars, Intermediate Chase, four runners, Frodon, Might Buy, Asdemi and La Belle des Oboe. So really, really interesting one, this. Um, Maddie, I guess we're looking at Might Bite to, to win this and then <clears> go on to really be a dominant force this season. How much are you looking forward to seeing him A on Sunday and B for the rest of the winter? Oh, massively. I mean, I'm probably going to be going on Sunday, so fingers crossed that Might Bite um, turns up and just blows them all away, to be honest, because he should be beating these, I think, if he's to you know, fulfil any of that promise we saw last season. Um, just an exciting horse to watch. He really does get the blood pumping. Um, and yeah, I think the rest in here, they're very good horses in their own right, but their targets lie elsewhere and, and he should just be able to absolutely breeze through this. Do you have Mike by as a very much the, the horse to beat this winter in you know all the big three mile chases? James? Yeah, he, he's my horse to follow this winter. Uh, very excited about seeing him on Sunday. I uh, expect him to win um, and I'm very hopeful he's going to prove the star of the season. Um, King George and Gold Cup. Uh, I hope he can win them both. Yeah. Fra Fra just, both. Go on, Matt. Sorry, just a note on that. If you remember last year, his he would have won the Felt and the Corto Star and obviously Chase. His time would have been like ridiculously faster than Thistlecracks in the King George. So that's, for me, as a massive Thistlecrack fan, really exciting in itself. Um, so I can't wait to see him. And what about you, Frank? Where do you have Mike Bite this season? Do you think he'll sweep all before him? Um, I think he obviously will win on Sunday. I think he'll win the King George. I think he'll get done at Cheltenham, though. Who bought? But I think... Uh, oh, I've wanted a massive price, but I'm keeping it under my hat for now. Wait to see what this <laughs> Oh, sorry, we you don't play that do sort that. of music. You can't <laughs> keep it under your oh, hat. Right, I'll say it. As in, as in I, I, I've started back in Coney Island already. I think it was an absolutely ridiculous price in comparison. I know our Duke uh, scored badly last week, but comparison to our Duke and Disco, he's, I'll tell you something now, he's the classiest of the lot of them. And uh, as long as that's what the aim is, I think he's going to be... No 33 to one shot come March. Um, now there is a small chance to run the Ryanair, but if he rocks up in the Gold Cup and means he'll have been campaign there and run well, I think he'll be a single figure price. I think he's an absolute tool. My issue with Mike Bite is I don't think Cheltenham is his best track. And I know he won the RSA last year, but if he does that kind of, if he displays those sort of antics next year in the Gold Cup, there isn't a prayer he can win. But I think, um, I think he's a absolute monster of a horse, and Kenton, he's going to be nigh on impossible to beat. But you're, you're lining up one of the all-time great Frank Hickey punts on Coney Island for the Gold Cup, are you? I'm, to be honest, I'm on the verge of going down to Eddie Hartley's yard and begging him to... <laughs> <laughs> Don't Eddie, run in the iron. Eddie's run a lovely iron. man. He'll listen to you, I'm sure. I, I, would, I would tell you this. If Coney Island rocks up in the Gold Cup, it'll be retirement money. Um, it will, what we'd be looking at come that, come that stage. You've already got retirement time at money, Frank. You've <laughs> won more than any of us can dream of. He's topping up. I mean, I mean retiring to Barbados, not the West Coast. Oh, Barbados. fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. OK, good. Well, we're going to have to join in now, aren't we? We're all going to have to go. Oh, this office doesn't have any betting shops anywhere <laughs> near it, by the way, does it? But can you can you get Paddy Power to open a betting shop near South Bank Central, please, Frank? There's... 150, 200 mug yeah. punters all sitting there. <laughs> and we've all got to walk about 10 minutes to find the nearest betting shop. It's no uh -huh. good. Apart from that, it's nice. OK, now, what else on Sunday are you looking forward to, Maddie? Have you got one right. for us at Sunday? I have, then? yeah. Um, in the, sorry, bear with me, 255, a mare called Maria's Benefit, um, similar to the Copper K thing. Um, very girly. I've followed her for a long time. Um, she's fit and I think she's ridiculously well handicapped off that mark. She beat a horse called Al Shahir who finished, I believe, second to a, another horse that I love, Kalashnikov at Weatherby last weekend. Um, also beat Rock Point on its last run who since ran an absolute stormer in that race won by, I think it was the Brown Bear at Ascot. Um, so Maria's benefit, I think she runs in that. Uh, she'll be flying up the hill um, and I, I really, really like her an awful lot so keep your eye on her. Um, Irish Prophecy He's another one to note um, for Emma Lavelle. I think he's unbeaten and he runs in the maiden hurdle. And then we have that lovely, lovely veterans race that we get around Sandown that I actually love. And I think Ublon de Zobo is worth mentioning that. Um, Would it be soft form, enough? Should be, shouldn't it? I hope so. Um, I mean, I think he's really well treated on the best of his form. Even if you look at last season, um, he's not actually been given that much of a hard time. I think he's sort of been plodding around in, in those big, you know, classic chases and races like that, finishing about fourth. Um, so I think, you know, now he's running in these veteran chases. Charlie Deutsch is on for Venetia. What's not to like? Um, so keep your eye on who Blonde is over. In the 3.30. James, what have you got for us at Sandown? Yeah, I've also got one in the two. 
255. I'm, I'm going to go for the uh, top weight, Fidux. Um, probably last season he was um, a bit high in the handicap, but he did run very well uh, at Sandam um, at the Bet365 meeting in April. Um, and a return to that form will give him a good chance here. Um, they're putting up uh, Kevin Dowling. He's going to take off £10. Uh, so that's a big help. I think that makes him very well treated. I'm not sure this is the best uh, race in the world. Uh, so I'm, I'm go pretty sure it's not the best race in the world. <laughs> I'm yeah. almost certain of that. <laughs> yeah. That's a safe prediction. Or may, maybe, you know, maybe a few, few rungs lower down than that. But um, yeah, providing the ground is not too soft, uh, he'll be my tip in the 255. OK, let's go across to Navin, where there's some really good action there and some good pointers uh, for what's to come. I suppose the highlight of the card is the four trier chase. Frank, I'm just going to let you let rip at Navin on Sunday. Who should we be backing? Um... Yeah, Jesus, the four three of trades. I'll give you the prices. Alicia Delarn is five for the game changer, seven to four. Clark Ham, six to one. Fine Riley, eight to one. And we're 14 to one bar. Um, not a race that excites me greatly. Um, I'd probably sit that one out. Uh, if you put a, if you made me have a bet, I'd probably back Alicia Delarn. But yeah, I won't be having a bet there. Um, Apples Jade runs in this Liz Mullen hurdles. She should be. Uh, very difficult to beat. She runs against Jars Girl and Monksland. Again, it's Apples Jade 2 to 5. Jars Girl 4 to 1. Monksland 5 to 1. And we're 50s bar. Um, in the 110, Mengli Khan runs against Stratum. Again, probably, uh, I think we were hoping to see Sam Crow out, but Mengli Khan takes the place. I think Mengli Khan might um, be the one there. And then as a beginner's chase at 245, Footpad runs against Bree Lad. Uh, that's an exciting race. Probably fall down the side of the footpad. Um, yeah, so that's it from Navin. I, I'm with um, Maddie in that 255. I think Maria's benefit is uh, really well handicapped off 117. I think he'll um, or she. she will go. <laughs> he will go very well. Um, like if you think about it, Dame Rose won the entry bumper uh, from Ayers, and uh, she was giving and uh, Maria's benefit was giving 11 pounds to her the day she was uh, beaten. So I think um, 117 underestimates her ability and. Um, Dame Rose was in disgrace at Newbury yesterday, carrying a penalty against Capsule. And uh, just one of possibly a big price in the 12.45 of Sandown. Sonny Taliktigan, I can't pronounce it, it's impossible. But uh, it was very well supported at Cheltenham last time in the race. Bobble Emerald won, Man of Plenty was an unlucky second. But uh, I, I thought two miles probably a bit sharp, but he, he could never really up them, it was always at it. Um, but he returned to two and a half miles here. And he's actually been dropped two pounds. Um, I think he can go well. I'm a massive fan of Ian Williams. I think he's one of the best trainers around, particularly uh, when they go for a little bit of a touch. And uh, if you see a few bob for this, I'd follow it in. Sunny Talatiga. No, it was good. She pronounced it yeah. well. Number 12. First race, first race of Foss Last. Another one of my favourite trainers, an unheralded Welsh fan called John Flint. Um, he probably doesn't get uh, enough good horses for the ability he has, but he runs one called Arian in the maiden hurdle um, this is a, ba a banger bumper winner at I think about 50 to 1 last year and uh, wasn't disgraced in a maiden hurdle uh, here over two months last time only caught late by Woolstone 1 who was on its first start for Emma Lavelle from Harry Whittenden um, I think if it repeats that form or steps up any little bit it would be very different to beat OK and Maddie have you got anything at Navin? Um, I'm not going to lie no I think it's all pretty much for watching briefs there's a lot of those match racing type things I do think Brellard is a really good horse um, so I'd be maybe opposing Frank's choice with him um, but yeah I think just excited to see Apple's Jade but from a betting perspective I'll just watch this Irish stuff Jimmy anything in Ireland for you? Well, I, I don't really think there are um, any serious bets at, at that meeting. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Footpad in the, the 245 over fences. Uh, I think he could go far as a, a chaser. Um, I'll probably go for Alicia Dierlond in the, the big race at mm. 210. He's got a good record fresh. Uh, I'll go for Mingli Khan to overturn Stratum in the in the novice hurdle, the 110. I think that the ground might be um, a bit too soft for Willie Mullins' horse in that. Smashing stuff. OK, what's the weekend plans, James? What are you up to? Uh, I'm hoping I can get to Wincanton um, tomorrow afternoon. What would stop you getting there? Uh, I've just got to meet some friends and stuff beforehand, so um, hopefully I can just kind of slip away from the do and uh, get get there in time for the elite hurdle. 
Um, so. Yeah, but uh, yeah, back here on uh, work on Sunday. But uh, yeah, gonna have a good day tomorrow. And what about you, Maddie? The opposite way round. Um, I'm working tomorrow, but then Sunday I hope to go to Sandown and win the absolute lot. <laughs> oh, good stuff. You were in Huntingdon last week, weren't you? No, I wasn't. I didn't I go didn't in the end. It. No, but um, yeah, I absolutely love Willoughby Court. It was a bit hair raising, so maybe it was a good job I didn't go. But yeah, I'm gonna make up for it Sandown right, on Sunday. In the end, didn't it? And Frank, what are you up to, mate? Uh, I'm working tomorrow, but I'm going to the uh, Ireland South Africa match after work, and then going to head out for a little bit to watch Ireland uh, crush the Danish World Cup hopes. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, working Sunday, and then all all steam ahead then for Tuesday, where uh, we'll go out to watch the second leg of that soccer. So I'm really excited for that. Oh yeah, you've got tickets for that, have you? At the Aviva? Uh, we're still working. I have to like gold us, um, but I'm hopeful we'll pull we'll pull one out of the hat yet. Well, uh, let's just say they don't get beat 3 0 in the first leg because then you'd be able to get one for about 10 uh, euros. Here. Okay. No, no, we're, impossible. we're impossible to beat that uh, like that. It'll be 1 0 either way on Saturday. Yeah. Then it should still, the tie should still be in the balance, shouldn't it, come the second I'll leg? I'd be absolutely it's not, yeah. Good luck with that. Okay, Frank, thank you very much. Thank you, Maddie. Have you enjoyed being tips rather than presenting yeah, this week? Yeah, I love it. Um, I wish I could do it more often. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> sure that can be arranged. And James, well done. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for listening or watching. Don't forget, if you do like the shows, do please rate us and leave a review on iTunes. Maddie's back on Monday. I'm back next Friday. Good luck. Have a great weekend. Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet if the horse you back finishes second, third or fourth to the SP favourite in at least two races every day this month. Max £25 per race. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Begumbleware.org.